Welcome to this week's edition of Detour. In the shadow of the Lotus Tower lie the handful of little Maradona secondhand bookshops. Though they are few in number, they are fascinating fossils from a previous era, when people actually read books. I am a dedicated book lover, and I am very happy to be doing an episode on these small fountains of knowledge. All of the shops we visited have been at this location in Maradona for at least 30 years, and one was even over 40 years old. Nowadays, these shops look very out of place in the midst of a rapidly modernizing Colombo. But the owners of these shops have witnessed Colombo transform over the years, from the capital of a war-torn country to a bustling metropolis, and they are excellent sources of information on how Sri Lankan society is changing. But, according to both shopkeepers and customers, these stores have remained the same for decades. But how did these bookstores get here, and how do they continue to exist? I decided to check out the shops to find out. What I discovered is that the forefather of these shops is one Premadasa Wiraratna Bandarawatta, who fought in the Royal Navy during World War II and lost an arm and a leg in battle. He returned to Sri Lanka after the war and opened a bookstore near the Maradana Railway Station in 1960. At the time, the main booksellers in that area were Tamil men who conducted an informal book lending and selling business. But Premadasa formed the first official business with a centralized store, and his was located near the station until 1976, when the non-aligned movement had their conference in Colombo. The area around the Maradona station was developed because of the conference, and Premadasa was forced to move his store to its current location on DR Wijewardena Mawata. I was told all of this history by Mr. Peter Apu, now the owner of Peter's Bookstore. He worked for Premadasa starting in the 1960s. In 1976, Peter started his own shop on DR Wijewarda Namaata, and he has been there ever since. Peter's store is a bit different from the others around it, since it has many magazines hanging in front. But Peter has an incredible knowledge of literature, and he spoke with me at length about the works of Bertrand Russell and Leo Tolstoy. He was particularly enthusiastic about Anna Karenina, and when he told me this, I knew I was a huge fan of his. The manager of Varna Surya Books noted that, since around 2000, his bestsellers have been books on Buddhism and philosophy. But interestingly, he said that he considers his line of work more a service than a business, in that he is providing very important books to those who might not be able to afford them. For instance, he said that he often sells books at discounted prices so that anyone can read them. He also runs a lending service, where it costs 20, 30, or 50 rupees to borrow one book for a month. I met one guy, Satis, who was visiting the stores in search of inexpensive school books for his kids. This was the first time he had visited the shops, but he said he would certainly come back. Then I met Imran, a devoted reader of fiction, who has been coming to these shops since around 1980. According to him, they haven't changed a bit and follow the same organizational patterns, where books are often grouped by the author's last name rather than the genre. These stores feel like a blast from the past, and hopefully they will withstand the test of time and continue to be useful resources for Colombo's readers. Join me next week for a special detour with a special guest.